think the comparison is quite important really. It wasn't a mindful decision to heal. It was more, we had no choice. We either make an album, start working together individually. I, I had a lot of things to get off my chest, obviously with my mother's death, but individually we all had reasons for catharsis. It was a vital point in our lives, not just careers, to really improve and make a change. And it was a forced change that was very explosive and violent, but in a very positive way. It was really turn it was a real turning point in the start of pragmatism. But the first bit was very unpragmatic. It was fun and primal. But out of that we learned the beauty and the, the love for making music for ourselves as an indulgent thing that can improve our lives and other people's. It was kind of the basis of catharsis. It was us understanding how to use catharsis in our artistic language. But it was very base, very primal, as Joe said. And I think the, what, we, what we've done with this second album is to recognize that and use self-reflection and use mindfulness and use an ability to recognize why the need for the catharsis is there and to explore those avenues. Yeah, we became more hungry, more grateful, because our ethos from the start was always to work hard. We always worked hard, we always turned up on time or early, and we always had a sense that we were behind because of our age. I mean, it's stupid, it's not true, but at the time we thought that 25, well, I was 25, was old to start a band. We saw it as um, an opportunity to work hard, and because of that, we kept our heads down, we didn't pay attention to peers, and we didn't look for gratitude. We never waited for that good review of our show, or waited for the label to turn up at our show. We knew that wasn't gonna happen, unless we improved constantly and worked hard. And it is true, if you keep your head down, and you work, and you just continue in learning your own artistic language and doing what you love, at some point, everything will align not by chance, but through learning. Um, so it was great because when you do start getting gratitude or you get to play in the middle of nowhere in Switzerland, five and, you know, around a beautiful lake, traveling in a coach with your best friends, talking about art, talking about food, eating for free every day in venues, meeting lots of beautiful people, that have a great attitude toward music is something we never asked for. What we ask for is of ourselves to work hard and write music we love. Everything else is like a real privilege and we're very grateful to be here. So it changed us in realizing that we can continue this because it's now our career, it's our full-time job and that allows us to get better and better. So it's just made us have a realization that this this could actually be life-changing for everyone um, as it already is but you know, even more so Music will always have an impact, this art is creative thinking. Whenever there is, you know, as, uh, the comparisons of the bands in the 70s, the punk era, was a volatile time. Um, like, there was a real polarizing of, of politics then, as there is now. It was almost the birth, the birth of neoliberalism in the 70s, when, you know, Reagan and Thatcher really fucked people over. And that kind of volatile air creates volatile creative thinking. Subversiveness becomes a real pro-action instead of just discussion at the home. It becomes action in the streets. So all the best art in the history came from volatile time, the Spanish Civil War, um, the Second World War, post-Second World War, the violence of culture, the birth of teenagers in the 60s, everything, brutalist architecture, 
is all re reactionary, creative thinking to fix things or to change things. Mm. People need to realize that there, there has to be a change, otherwise the poor will become poorer, the rich will become richer, and the world will die soon. Yes, to breathe, utterly, absolutely more. A young boy, I try and instill a set of real proactive sense of empathy because privilege is not something I can help as a man. I am privileged because I'm a man. What I can do is understand my privilege and use that privilege for the benefit of everyone, not just myself. It's to learn to live unselfishly and appreciate your privilege and utilize that in a fair way. And I think empathy is a really important tool I think you need to like learn the language of the self, which takes so long. It's not something a child can comprehend really, but you instill that early on, empathy. It's about making them ask the questions, how would you feel if this was done to you? What can you do to make every situation you're in fair and live fairly? It's, um, so I think for, for my children, if I'm blessed to have children, would be to instill a sense of empathy and privilege when they have it, to understand it. Gender tropes are only as poignant as you allow them to be as a parent you know you, you just you eradicate the bullshit because you know i don't want to apply color and strength or sensitivity to a boy or a girl i want them to flourish in what they're good at because i'm not good at everything and the reason why i'm so happy now is because i found a creative voice that focuses on my flaws and my strengths and celebrates living being um yeah i love dirty dancing not because it's a cultural behemoth but because it reminds me of being five and watching it with my mom and dancer and i love it we didn't dirty dance though there are two arguments one they create a lot of money for tourism in britain that's a fact they create more money for the economy than they do cost us. But they are one of the sole reasons there's a sustenance of fascistic ideas based on class in England. It's a disgrace that they still exist. It's greed. It's like, it's so archaic and beyond my understanding of democracy. Um, I think it's a fucking disgrace. Um, and I hate that it exists. But I can't argue with the economy side, they do create money. But I think the ideological weight of the royal family and the class system in England is crippling. It's crippling. I've been attacked, not physically, but verbally by people for being middle class and being in a band like Idols. In England, class is like this, it's like shackles on people's perception. And it's just boring. The poor in our country, very overlooked and underappreciated and are starving. There's food banks in our country. So to have a royal family at this point in time is a disgrace. Thank you, royal family, for listening. You blue-blooded Nazi cunts.